Hello and welcome to Reservoir Red Dogs, the brand new Nottingham Forest podcast. Every fortnight we'll bring you the latest on Forest, plenty of nostalgia and some massive guests and cult heroes from Forest past and present as well as general nonsense. I'm Matt Ford, lifelong Forest fan, former junior Red and mascot for our 1-1 home tour against Crystal Palace in 1993. But that impressive Forest CV is nothing compared to my fellow host. He is a Forest legend and his name is Paul McGregor. Legend. Now, that's one thing, but when you sat next to this man, um, I'm not going to take that, I don't think. Well, the man that Paul McGregor is referring to is arguably the greatest player, not only in Nottingham Forest, but the entirety of football history. <laughs> Mr John <laughs> Robertson. I wish, yeah. <laughs> We're very lucky to have John here today. Paul and I will be here every fortnight. Uh, Paul, you'll always be remembered for one particular goal, of course, away at Sheffield Wednesday. Um... um... <laughs> 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 well, it was the goal against Leon, wasn't it? Most people remember you for that. Uh, they do, yeah. I mean, I remember myself for that every single morning in the mirror. That's all I've got. That's all I've got. Clothes on or off? <laughs> um, half and half, really. Just the bottom half off, you know, like a, like any good newsreader. It's a great goal. Um, my favourite thing about it, and I'm sure if people aren't familiar with it, most Forest fans should be, they can look it up on YouTube, is not just you getting quickly on the rebound from a psycho penalty in a, in a major European game, but Colin Cooper then running across the face of goal. And does he knock himself unconscious on the goalpost? <laughs> no, I remember when I got home that night and my mum was uh, mum was on the settee, literally in tears, like crying her eyes out, laughing her head off. And I was like, you know, expecting to walk <laughs> into this big embrace. Oh, the sun's got my home, he's made it. And I walked through the door and she's like, what? What? watch this, watch this. So I sat down, we sat and watched it, and she's like, and I watched it, and I, all, obviously I only focused on me scoring and celebrating. I was like, yeah, it's class, wasn't it? Amazing, I've, I've made it. And then uh, she's like, no, no, I rewound it. She's like, watch him. <laughs> and he comes running in, and it's proper Charlie Chaplin. Like, the feet are going for about 10 minutes. You know when you see someone falling over, and it takes them about a week. <laughs> it, was, it was going, it was going, and then he just slips, and his head just goes... Right on the post. Forehead, perfect. Couldn't have edited it better. It's, it's one of the few goals to have um, <clears throat> also received £250 from You've Been Framed. It's a great, <laughs> it's a, it's a great piece of video. Uh, both of you have scored major goals for Forest in major European games. Uh, Paul, obviously, against Leon that took us through to the quarterfinal against Bayern Munich. And Robbo, of course, that won the European Cup. Wow. Won the Champions yeah. League. Well, it's great memories. There's no doubt about it. Scoring goals is always wonderful, but I, I get as much a kick out of creating them as well, you know. And the one the year before with, with Trevor, Trevor's goal was yeah. really chuffed with that. Do you ever, I mean, people sometimes watch their goals back on YouTube. I watch your goals back on YouTube. How often do you sort of... Clothed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, never. No, no, no. <laughs> Heating on full blast. <laughs> I set the alarm once an hour, I think. <laughs> do you still <laughs> watch the goals back that you scored? Not often, but some there's been which I've, I think is a long time coming. The Sky have got this, this football's greatest, the new teams on it. Yeah. So whenever that comes on, you end up watching it. Even though I've seen it a million times, but it, it, I think it's, it's something I've always wanted. The thought that the players never get the credit individually. I believe in miracles was better. <laughs> just prompted there by producer Johnny Owen, who yeah. uh, also just coincidentally happened to produce the uh, the I, DVD. Is now trying to market on this podcast. Actually, I've got a lot to thank Johnny for. He's made me a better player in the last three years than I ever was. <laughs> Paul, uh, as a Forest fan, I've got to ask you, you had an amazing playing career, but if you had to narrow it down to one, what was your best Merc gig ever? Merc? <laughs> oh, good grief. I have to say, yeah, the Merc were a school band, basically. So, uh, when, you know, Or Ulterior, then? Oh, definitely Ulterior, yeah. Um, well, Terry, a proper band. Merck was Merck was a school band that it just so happened that I started playing for Forest when I was still messing around with my yeah. school band, and then we're, we're playing Rock City, which is uh, which was just a, just the craziest night. Like it's, it's like um, I'm not comparing this to the Sex Pistols, but it's the <laughs> you know the Hundred Club or, or yeah, but I am anyway. Um, thanks, Johnny. But uh, or the Velvet Underground. Where every, people, everyone said, you know, oh, I was at that gig, I was at that gig. I, I'll bump into anyone in Nottingham. The, the capacity downstairs in Disco 2 is only about 300. But I must have met about 600 people that were at that gig that night. <laughs> it was crazy. Like, you know, just like the whole of the first team were on the front row going absolutely balmy. But at that point, you were a Premier League footballer. Like, can you imagine now, you know, uh, Mares or Alexis Sanchez doing a gig uh, in a sort of boozy <laughs> underground 
you know, I can't imagine Theo Walcott being a, a lead singer of a grime band or whatever the equivalent would be now. Do you even get grime bands? <laughs> well, I it sound like an old colliery band. <laughs> no, I've, never, grime I've band. never heard of it. Grime, <laughs> grime bands. Yes, yeah, like Stormzy and stuff like that, Robbo. Stormzy? Yeah. Never the, heard of them. It's the new music. No, don't know it. I know Roxy Music were my band. Oh, I love Roxy Music. Uh, they were, they were, <laughs> I love the were, Avalon album's amazing. Yeah, yeah. First, what do you call it? For Your Pleasure's the best one. But it's a great, they were, they were brilliant. So band. you were, were you Eno or post Eno? Um, but both. I thought Virginia playing was entirely different to anything I'd ever heard before. Yeah. It was just something else. It was a brilliant song. And I really got into it. I mean, he, whatever he's, Ferry's got, it's got style and class, there's no doubt about it. But like right, yourself. But right, uh, kind of like me, smart like me. Uh, <laughs> I call myself shabby chic. <laughs> <laughs> so, Robert, what, what was the most recent band or artist you got into? Recent, got into? Yeah. Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the latest ones, but I, I was always a Roxy Music fan, the Stones, and in the 60s, the move. Roy Wood was a big hero of mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, I thought he wrote some great, brilliant songs. Flowers in the Rain was, yeah. But I Can Hear the Grass Grow was one of the best singles of all time. And do you have, what, what are your favourite songs to sort of sing along to? Well, I like, I love, I love, uh, my karaoke's Virginia playing, Honky Tonk Women and Jumping Jack Flash. I mean, if we play our cards right, we might get you to sing on the podcast, if that's all right. Well, <laughs> do you take much encouragement? Only about three laggers. <laughs> right, get them in. That is the sound nah. of Johnny Owen going to the nearest Tesco Express. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll talk about various things on this podcast. We'll trawl through old kits, old chants, uh, what it was like. Uh, we'll hear from our guests what it was like to play for Forrest. We also want your funny stories about following the Reds as well. We've got a Twitter page set up, at RRD1865. Robo, RRD Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're on Twitter. You can tweet us at RRD1865 or you can email us RRD1865 at Outlook.com. You took the mick out of me for setting up an Outlook email the other day. Outlook, yeah. I mean, what year is it? 2017. (sighs) Why is that? What should I have done then? Gmail, mate. What Really? Yeah. Is that the way the world's gone? (sighs) Am I setting up a sort of Betamax email account? You really are, yeah. I'm yeah. behind the curve. Yeah, you're a Commodore 64. Johnny Owen saying, have I heard of Facebook? <laughs> yes, I have heard of it. I'm not, I'm only 34. I just... I've heard the Betamax. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the right side of I've history. Heard, honestly, I've heard the Betamax, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can get in touch with us. and we've got, we've got various features we're going to try out today. They may never last to episode two. These may Probably be not. That, they probably won't, because no. I came up with them all, and they're frankly dreadful. <laughs> but our first feature, this brand new podcasting Nottingham Forest era, number one. Is Brian Rice. And number two is Brian Rice. And number three is Brian Rice. And number four is Brian Rice. This is where we discuss our favourite chants from, uh, not well, mainly Forest. It'd be interesting to hear from you fellas from your playing days about the chants that you had. You know, to hear an, uh, to hear a football stadium chant in your name, Robbo. How does that feel when you fir- when it first happens? Do you remember the first time? Whenever I come out at half time and it was. It was always great. I always looked forward to hitting from towards the bridge for the end. Yeah. I enjoyed that. They seemed to like me better than they did in the main stand. Why was that, do you think? I don't know. Just because I probably played better when I was away from Cluffy. <laughs> 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 so when you hear people chanting your name, are there any memorable chants that you remember from your playing days? Uh, I didn't I didn't get enough minutes at Forest to gain one, really, I don't think. And I've got several... I've, I've got three syllables in my in my last name. It's it's a difficult one to do, I think. But I got I had one. One Paul McGregor. Oh, well, you've just done it. Yeah, yeah. I just wasn't. (laughs) I just wasn't popular enough. (laughs) But but, but what about at Plymouth? Yeah, I had one at Plymouth. What was that? Used to sing uh, the walking along, singing a song. Walking in a McGregor Wonderland. McGregor Wonderland. (laughs) Oh, that's quite nice, and it's got a nice festive feel to it. It has, yeah. Muck God, that was your nickname, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Amazing. I mean, that's one of the best nicknames you can have, isn't it? It's yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, back page of the newspaper when I scored a goal. McGod, McGod does it again. <laughs> was that would, would that go to your head? Oh, massively, yeah. Oh, massively. <laughs> <laughs> what about abuse then? Because from a fan's point of view, obviously sometimes one loses one's temper, and you think you kind of do it hoping that you're slightly anonymous. As players, did, would you ever hear abuse from supporters? Oh yeah, I used to get it. Uh, you know, it makes me laugh sometimes when 
when I hear about how good I was supposed to have been. And then uh, I appreciate he was a good player, but uh, sometimes you get you think you get, people get carried away. <laughs> and uh, I remember loads of times when my my woo, when the ball went to me, the booze came up because I had a couple of nightmares. And do you remember any sort of specific bits of abuse? Yeah, I remember. What, well, not what they, what they were chanting, but every, every time I touched the ball, I had a nightmare. It was Bristol City, 1981. We'd just come back from um, Tokyo, the World Club Championship, and we had a nightmare. We'd been travelling all week. It was a nightmare. But the crowd lost it with me, and uh, I lost it back. I think I put my, uh, an indecent signal to them towards the end when I scored the penalty. So that, Something well, I regret actually because I shouldn't have reacted, but but well, I think every every player's gone through a bad time at some some stage or another. There's no doubt about that. So what's the signal? One finger or two? Or it something was else? two in those days. <laughs> and what? Uh, uh, well, Winston Churchill's opposite victory <laughs> sign. <laughs> the mirror image. Well, he sometimes did it that mirror way, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Paul, did you ever sort of react to abuse? Yeah, I got, I got. Uh, done for inciting a riot at Portsmouth. Wow! For doing the same thing. <laughs> really? Yeah. Two fingered salute. We were down at Portsmouth, and I don't know if you remember, but the, I don't know if it's still the same ground. It might be. I'm not, I don't know. But you're so close to the fans. Yes, you are. Yeah. So close. And you're trying to warm up. And I had kind of. Shaggy. I don't know what I was going for then. What was I going for at the time? <laughs> maybe a um, maybe a blondie and brown or something like yeah. that at the time. And uh, I'm running up and down the touchline, and I'm getting sworn at viciously. So was my mother, my everything. You know, it was horrendous. Everywhere I stood to um, to stretch or do anything, it was like, oh, you're in the way, move, move. So I, I just thought, do you know what? I'm not going to please any of these. So I just stood there stretching, stretching, yeah. and there, there must have been a hundred lads just right down the front, and they just targeted me, and that was it. And I, I was getting it. And so there was one particularly little. I'll never forget his face. I've turned around. I'm looking at them all. There's one. He's like, you know, throffing at the mouth. You know, yeah. he's. Throffing, frothing <laughs> at the mouth, <laughs> a bit Supposed like me, play, yeah. Uh, yeah, just so venomous. And I've turned around, just looked at him, was like, What are you, what are you doing? He's, he's like, You know, edging onto the pitch, and the police are there. So I, I gave him a straight two fingers, yeah. and uh, the, the, the police stormed the dressing room at half time. Give us Paul McGregor, give us Paul McGregor. I used to get a bit, you know, coffee called me the little fat lad, now. Yeah. There's two stories I could tell you that. I, I can't work out to this day how, how they go go together, but I was at Everton. We were playing at Everton one day, and uh, there's a lull in the game. Somebody's injured, and it's at the far end, the dugout end, when I'm at the other opposite, and I'm standing there with my usual pose, hand and hips. Yeah, fagging hand. <laughs> fagging hand. <laughs> just, just, I just put that out before. <laughs> and, my, and I'm just watching, standing, waiting for the game to start, and this voice comes out, Hey, Robertson. I turned around and I said, what? He said, get the way I can't see the game. <laughs> 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 and to, the, the opposite effect was I was in, we had to game, we were going to um, at Trentham Gardens in Stoke oh, on the way to Scotland. Yeah. And um, I'm sitting having uh, dinner and this lad's uh, older, older chap in my eye line and keeps catching my eye and catching my eye. Anyway, we go up to leave. And as I'm going past him, he says, hey, oh, excuse me. And I went, yeah. He says, don't I know you? And I went, well, I think, you know, football, you know. Well, I play professional football. Oh, no, 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 no. Aren't you in the Royal Ballet? <laughs> <laughs> what as? Exactly, honestly. So I coffee, I'm a fat, one minute I'm a fat guy in the wing, and the next minute I'm self like ballet dancer. <laughs> Two stories. Have you got any chants you particularly uh, remember or were fond of or indeed hated? Uh, do tweet them into us at RRD1865. Uh, time now for What a Load of Old Kit, a nostalgic trawl through some of Forrest's best and worst kits. Uh, Paul, you're, you're into sort of clothes design these days. Kits can be fashionable things that can be worn out and about. Um, They're really shit. fashionable at the minute. They're all over the, all over the catwalks, all vintage kits, yeah. They are. You're laughing, they are. Really? Genuinely, I thought you being yeah. sarcastic. No, they're absolute high fashion at the minute. So what, any ones in particular? Just nice design. I think people, it's 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 great actually. People are wearing like just, you know, really well designed kits, you know, some old PSG kits or if you can pick up an Ajax kit or whatever or even going back to some of the old classic Man United kits. This is really nice. <laughs> and they said there's a really nice red one then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good grief. Um, but yeah, the the... They're all over the catwalk at the moment. So are football scarves. Do you keep any... Have you kept, either of you, many of you, the shirts that you played in? 
I've, I've kept a lot of, you know, when you swap shirts, and they do it more nowadays than they did in my day. It was international games where I kept the jersey. I've still got all the international shirts that swapped. But if you, did you I, keep, have you kept your European Cup final shirts? I've got one of them. Which and one? The, the first one. 79. 79. And uh, I didn't get the one where I scored. And, and coincidentally, I don't think Trevor Francis did either. Didn't get them? Well, they went missing somehow. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, mine no. and Trevor's. No Apparently, way. I think so. What, on the day they went missing? Well, I don't know when. We just handed them back and waited, but I never got mine. I don't know what happened to it. They've I've got, got the 79 one. In fact, well, we should try and track them down. Yeah, if anyone well, knows uh, the whereabouts. Uh, yes, if, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, I, would, uh, I would appreciate it. There's a private collector's black market, according to Johnny Owen, who seems strangely well-informed about this yeah. Uh, yeah. Silk Road situation. Yeah, 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 we yeah. know what his pyjamas look like. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paul, did you keep any of yours? Um... My dad's got them. I've, okay. got, I've got a shirt I swapped with Beckham um, in a pre-season game. I've got the shirt for... Uh, I've got my Bayern Munich shirt. Amazing. A um, Leon shirt, obviously. Orcs there. That, and basically a couple of home kits. But I, I've given most of my home shirts away. I've, oh. I've still got the one, though, um, which is my favourite one, where, with the, my very first shirt, <laughs> where... Um, <laughs> It says Crosby on the back, <laughs> and it's it just literally been peeled off. It's all puckered around where his name is, and McGregor's just stuck on it all wonky. <laughs> <laughs> and I played in that uh, in my first in my, in my first season, like coming off the bench. And, and which so <laughs> and which kit would that be? Is that the pinstripe or is that the black? No, it's the one with the with the black bars. There. Yeah, yeah, down the ninety four, ninety five home the kit. The one everyone remembers, Collie Moore in, yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful kit. It's a great kit, yeah. And the so with the with the Leon shirt, have you got that framed? Or is that oh just no, I don't do any of that. You've got to get it framed, Paul. Okay. So imagine, what, but imagine someone coming into your house. Yeah. And then you're just going to stand next to it like Alan Partridge, just <laughs> leaning on the mantelpiece. What's that? Well, oh, it's me. So- <laughs> me. <laughs> this shirt. That is Paul McGregor's shirt <laughs> from the 1995-96 season against Leon. Yeah. Referring to myself in the third person. Yeah. So did, did, Paul, did you swap your uh, club shirts then uh, the, with the European teams you played against? Uh, yeah, only in Europe because we used to get a good telling off if we ever swapped our well, shirts. Well, exactly. I, I, can't, I can't remember ever getting any from no. opposition from the Europe days. We got so, we got our two shirts at the end of the season, our home and away. So how many shirts would you use over the course of a season? It wasn't a new one, one for every game. You'd wear one shirt same, all season? Yeah, shirt, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, my we, God. you get washed, like. We've talked about some of the nicer kits. Forest have had some nasty kits over the years. The yellow away kit oh, from sorry. 95 to... Well, there was the yellow away kit from your period. That yeah, was that was a brilliant kit. The simple kit. yellow and blue. Brilliant kit. But that travesty <clears throat> of a homage to it in the 90s with the sort of graffiti down both sides. Uh, no, oh, that was like remember. a ZX Spectrum and a Commodore 64 wet patch, wasn't it? Yeah, it looked like a robot had puked on it. Oh, other than their home, that's the best-selling retro kit in the Forest Club store. The yellow away kit? You're kidding. How do you know that? Because we're in the modern, post-ironic age, aren't we? So people sort of wear that now as a kind of... Look how disgusting I am. <laughs> <laughs> Not the first time Paul McGregor said, look how disgusting I am. It's nice that this time is in the context of football. I, I remember <laughs> Paul Lambert, you know, the old Celtic player, Scotland player. Yeah. And uh, he loved our, uh, the 78 uh, away kit, the, the one we wore at Man United. Yes. He, he remembers buying that. He thought it was a great kit. And I agree with him. There's something classy about it. And there was also something classy about the old red. I think it made yeah. us look, yeah. you know, really European, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it was Shankly that changed Liverpool's kit from white shorts to red shorts. And there is something about old red. I think it makes you look sort of bigger, if you, if you know what I mean. Yeah. More daunting if you come and play again. It's an intimidating colour. Good word, that daunting, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. For this time of the morning, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Time now for Fun on the Phone. Every fortnight we'll get a different Forest fan on the phone to chat about uh, the current situation at Forest and uh, a few bits of nostalgia as well. This week on the first ever Fan on the Phone on the first ever Reservoir Red Dogs podcast is the one and only Helena Doughty. Helena, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure. I'm here with Paul McGregor and John Robertson. Hi, Helena. Oh my gosh. Hi, guys. Hi, how are you all right? <laughs> I'm very that... well, thank you. Fan going out a little bit. Uh, are you are you optimistic about Forest at the moment? I am the eternal optimist when it comes to Forest. Um, I think, which is a trait that we all share, being mm. fans. Um, I have given up on expectation, though. 
uh, especially for the season. I'm still quite jaded from the end of last season, to be honest with you. <laughs> and, yeah. um, uh, I'm just happy to be where we are. So uh, I'm, I've refu- I am refuse to uh, expect anything, but I am the eternal optimist, as it were. In terms of uh, your match day preparations, like, do you have any superstitions before going to or, or watching a Forest game? I mean, it depends. Um, it sounds Africa like you're not telling down. us something there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I have a lot of like weird things that I do during the week. Like I have to, um, especially if it's a big game, you know, like Derby week or something like that, then I will, I, for every single day of the week, I have to wear something with the forest emblem on it. Wow. Uh, be that socks, be that a hat, be that just something. It has to be every single day. Um, and then if I'm at the city ground, I have... Um, a couple of people that I always like to speak to before a game. Um, that sounds sinister. Mike, uh, outside. Yeah, no. Um, so do you seek them out? There, there's, there's quite a few things that go into it. I <laughs> didn't realise I was superstitious until um, I tried one day not to do any of these things and I realised that I was an absolute nervous wreck and we lost as well. So if anything, it's never going to happen again. So do these people know they're part of your routine or not? Is it no, they have no idea. Uh, Mike is one of the blokes who works outside the boardroom. I've known him since, I mean, it was knee high to a grasshopper, as it were. And uh, he is uh, wonderful. And if I don't have a good conversation with him beforehand and a proper hug, then it's not going to be a good game. So, in terms of what, so you, you start seven days out from a big game wearing Forest branded, whatever it is. Um, yeah. Why? And sometimes I get my nails painted in the forest uh, colours. At the moment, I'm sporting red on all nails bar two, which are gold for our, uh, obviously, our cups. Me too! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's on your feet, Paul. Yeah, no, so no yeah I was going to say, he's copied me once again. Because <laughs> I, wear, I wear forest cufflinks. That's the closest yeah. I get to it. In fact, I used to have a pair of forest underpants that my mum got me, and it, it, said on the, it said on the front, I hang around the city ground. Oh, dear. And, uh, but this was, I was like primary school age and my mum got me these things. And it was only, in fact, it's only now retelling it. I realised how quite peculiar that sounds. Yeah, I think we need to end that right there. Oh, they're brilliant though. We need to bring them back. And in terms of a favourite Forest player then, who would it be? Oh There's so many. There's so many. Who are the contenders? Um, contenders, obviously DJ. Um Love that man. Uh, Stevie Stone, Ian Wone. Wone, what a left foot he had. I'm a Wone. Oh. Um, and, and I like, you know, like the boys have hung around, you know, like Andy Reid, Jack Lester. Yes. Um, you know, like the, the boys who proper bleed Garibaldi, you know, I like that. And in terms of an all time Forest legend, Helena, who would you say is Forest's <laughs> greatest player in their history? I mean, John Robertson. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Helena. Thank you. Well, oh yeah, you saw my reaction when we met each other a couple of weeks ago. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm still starstruck. Can't believe I'm on the phone to you. I was right extremely now. flattered, darling. I was extremely flattered. I've already printed out actually the photo, and I'm, I'm um, waiting to get a new frame for my kitchen. So. <laughs> <laughs> Helena, an absolute pleasure having you on the show. I'm sure we'll get you back again. Thank you for joining us on oh, Reservoir. Well, it's been a, yeah, it's been a complete joy. Lovely to, to meet you and speak to you again and whatnot. Have a have a great rest of your podcast. Helena Doughty there, who has a, a superstition. Did you did you fellas as players have superstitions before games? I didn't know. As long as I had twenty fags before the game, I was <laughs> like, that was the only superstition I had. Uh... Did you have any, Paul? No, not really. I was, I'm not like that. But um, I, I was very meticulous in. I, I used to take my time in putting my boots on my pads and making sure my boots felt just perfectly and just so. So it would be a quiet, stilling sort of calming five minutes. Just yeah doing them up, making sure they were right and getting the tongue over. And... and in the days where you played, did you polish your own boots or was that still something that the sort of YTS lads or the, or the youth team oh, that was did? all the youth team. It was all, yeah. yeah. Was that the same for you as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, they all did that. Yeah. Did that not make you feel slightly uncomfortable? Well, I used to do it when I was an apprentice. Yeah. I used to clean Ian Story Moore's boots. Wow. They never gave me a, never gave me a penny at Christmas, miserable game. And what, what would you get for your boot cleaners? I gave them nothing as well. <laughs> The legacy, that's it. <laughs> the victim becomes the perpetrator. It's I, had, I had Nigel Clough, and he used to give me £400 every time he tipped me. 
Four hundred I mean, that's a lot of money now. And Kingsley Black, he was great as well. Kingsley I remember Kingsley Black getting food poisoning. <laughs> just as a fan, I remember thinking. Yeah, well, I was his boot boy. I had to pick up his slips. <laughs> yeah, you're putting raw chicken in his that. boot. <laughs> what did he give you 400 quid for? Christmas. Nigel used to give me 400 quid. I'm going to go in the phone to him now. I'm going to go in the phone to him now. 400 quid. Yeah, you need it back dating, mate. It's like, yeah, the, wasp, yeah, it's like yeah. the Waspy Women yeah. campaign. Robbo <laughs> said he's had a ton. A lot of people who played for, for, for Nigel's dad, Brian, can impersonate him. Me? Yeah. Do, 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 you, do you have a cluff impression, Robbo? Um. You no, not very good, young man. Oh, that's good. That's good. I'm. Um, I remember when I was in for. A, I told him I wanted a with new contract, and uh, he said, "Right, what do you want, son?" And I said, "Well, I told Pete that I wanted a testimonial." Done. <laughs> so I got my testimonial, and I knew the wages would be a a problem, you know. Yeah. And what about wages, son? I said, "Well, it's, it's swollen Madam's apple." I said, "Well, I want five hundred pound a week." He went. Polish Nigel Kloss boots. <laughs> <laughs> Rolls off the tongue, young man. Five hundred pounds a week, nice round number. Done. Wow. And I felt I'd been. <laughs> <laughs> I felt I'd been done. Couldn't believe it was that easy to get five hundred quid a week. Double my wages. Nineteen eighty. That's what agents are for, though. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. And then he made, I'll tell you what he did then. He said, but why don't you scale it? Why don't you take 400 this year, 500 next and six in the last? And I thought that was a good idea. <laughs> I lost £100 a week in the first year. <laughs> he, 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 knew, he, knew, he knew I'd be back in in a year's time for me. <laughs> Brilliant. What would, what would Cluffy say to you, Paul? Because you knew him very well. Yeah, I had a... Um, I was chatting to, I think, you and Johnny about it the other day. I had a, quite a, a unique... Um, relationship with him because um he used to call me blondie so, <laughs> uh yeah obviously i came through the youth team and i was in the youth team um I, when i was in the youth team i used to score quite a few goals so i scored quite a lot of goals he liked a goal scorer so i was his favorite uh so you'd hear every morning you'd hear del boy scampering down the not every morning most mornings del boy comes scampering in about 30 seconds before you just hear the door come open and you'd hear, Blondie! <laughs> and then just uh, any old, you know, fix me a drink, run me a bath. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever it'd be. And normally it would be, uh, take Del Boy down the Trent and <laughs> don't bring on. him back until he's done his business. <laughs> It's, it's, it's so funny that he would talk behind closed doors the way he would on telly, that kind of hectoring, I like a bay. You know, <laughs> I, I always try and get cloth. He, he's quite hard to do, but he, he, he had the quite curly lips, didn't he? I like to be, dictators are out. But I like to be the perfect dictator. And he had, it was a sort of, there was more northeast in his I voice. What, yeah, I, yeah. What I notice about his voice, particularly in my era, he would get quite aggressive towards the end of a sentence yes yes which is like it, when he was when he was in his prime <laughs> uh, with with rob it was, it was you know his sentences was end would end down yeah but with with me it would be the it would be like yeah. something really innocuous like um you know um son can you pick up that piece of paper please and put it in the bin so yeah. I'm, and he would just like son can you pick up that piece of paper please and put it in the bin <laughs> And it wasn't aggressive, it was just... It was that's such that's, a good observation. That's exactly right. I remember I'm having a team meeting with uh, Liam O'Kane and uh, Paul's, uh, the way he said it, but he used to repeat it. For instance, uh, with Liam in the, the half-time team talk, he went to point up the problem. Liam, son, when do you decide to make a tackle? Son, when do you decide to make a tackle? Son, when do you decide to make a tackle? Because if you back off any further, you'll be in the River Trent. <laughs> but his voice got louder. He said, repeat it yeah. three or four times. Yeah. That observation you made, Paul, I've got an old video, 1988-89, Wembley, Wembley. And there's a bit on there where he just gets, he gets sort of angry as he goes, it's been a long, hard, claw season. Sat with directors and directors' <laughs> wives. And hangers on. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. Every That's sentence right. to get more. And you and your <laughs> you. lot might just recognise that we're a good side. The man was, I can't speak highly enough of him. He's an absolute genius. I only met him twice. I was a mascot for a Forest game in 1993, uh, just before we got relegated. So it must have been one of his last home games yeah. in charge. 
and he was in a sort of bad way, but I had really bad eczema on my face. And uh, the guy brings you in and he says, oh, Matthew, this is um, Mr. Clough. Mr. Clough, this is Matthew, the mascot. And he went, bloody hell, son, <laughs> you are an ugly bugger. <laughs> he goes, what have you been doing all afternoon? Headbutting pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ten years old. I'm a, you know, a very meek yeah, young lad yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I said no. I said, Mr. Clough, it's um, it's eczema. <laughs> he goes, oh, I'm on his yacht, young man. Give your granddad Brian a kiss. And then he <laughs> takes into the physio's room, and Graham Lias is in there. And you got anything for this young man's face? And he gives me a pot of this stuff called Betnovate. Now, my Betnovate, eczema, yeah, I know it. I was so bad, I used to have to... I mean, you can still see I've got a bit of it, but it, my eczema was chronic as a kid. I used to have to go to the hospital every week. And this stuff was like miracle cream. It cleared it up. So the GP says, why have you have you taken dairy out of your diet or wheat? What? I said, no, 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 I've got Betnovate. Because you cannot use that on your face. <laughs> it, it, they developed it on horses. It can cause skin cancer. Where on earth did you get it? I said, Brian Clough gave it me. And he went... Have you met Cluffy? Eh? <laughs> and even as a 10-year-old kid, I was like, yeah, 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 but what's this about skin cancer? <laughs> That's all right, then. And then years later, the, the, the other time I met him, I had a photo, you know, in your mascot, they take loads of photos yeah. of me on the day, and I had one of me in my kit and him hugging me in his green jumper, and I queued up to get his second autobiography, Walking on Water, signed. And I had that photo with me. I said, oh, can you sign that as well, please, Mr. Cluffy? He went, oh, I looked a lot better back then. So did you, you fat <laughs> <laughs> so the only two times I met him, he absolutely. He gave oh, yeah. me two great stories to tell. Oh, he was brilliant. He was, was brilliant. He really was. Uh, we're coming towards the end of uh, of this of this inaugural episode of uh, Reservoir Reservoir Red Dogs. Um, we should have thought that through, shouldn't we? Should have thought it through before I realised <laughs> I couldn't speak English. Um, and if you got if you want to join in on any of the conversations we've had, tweet us at RRD1865. If you've got any suggestions for future guests or features or things you'd like us to cover, uh, do let us know about uh, Awful Away Kits, the worst chance you've ever heard. Uh, and you can email any funny stories to do with Forrest to RRD1865 at outlook.com. Uh, just before we do go, Robert, I always wanted to ask you because there's a great bit in the I Believe in Miracles film where you say that Cluffy describes you as a wastrel. Yeah. Uh, what exactly does a wastrel mean and, uh, and what sort of wastrel were you? I was, well, when he first came, he called me a tramp and a boozer. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember, uh, it was a headline in the Sunday people, the, tr the tramp is king. Because I won them, you remember they used to give marks out of ten? And I'd won the, stri the strikers thing. I won can you believe it? I won strikers for the year. And it's the headline was the Trump is king. So of course my mum gets on the phone to me and says, "How can you let that man call you a tramp and a boozer?" I said, "Hang on, mum. Hang on a minute." He went kind on me. I left out the fags and birds. <laughs> <laughs> Robbo, it's been a pleasure having you here on this first uh, Reservoir much, Red Dogs podcast. Maybe you should say it. Reservoir Red Dogs You've got a podcast. far nicer voice than me as well. Do you reckon? I'm yeah, better I think looking you... as well, aren't I? You're better looking, you're better at football. You haven't got eczema on your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do let me do it, be fine. Paul and I'll be back in a fortnight with another Forest legend and we'll start our fortnightly quest to find someone who's ever owned a Zycom two-way radio, bought random steel or eaten Mournflake oats. Hit the subscribe button and you'll get every episode immediately downloaded for free. Leave us a review on iTunes as well, which will help other Forest fans find us. Tweet us at RRD1865. Email us any requests for funny Forest stories to RRD1865 at Outlook.com. Spread the word. You reds. You reds. That's not all. We couldn't just leave you uh, on that. We've got a special extra feature for you now. Um, this is John Robertson singing live Honky Tonk Woman. I met a gin so barroom queen in Memphis. Da -da. <laughs> she tried to take me upstairs for a ride. Da -da -da. <laughs> she had to heave me right across her shoulder. And I just can't seem to drink it off my mind. Here we go then. It's a honky tonk women. Give it.
Gimme, gimme, gimme the honky tonk. Go, Robo! 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 Fantastic. I think we've right. we got the opening. I think we've got the opening, right? I think we've <laughs> yeah. One take.